If you've ever seen me try to change my guitar strings or cook, you'll know that I'm a bit of a savant when it comes to not improving at something despite years of doing it. Some people are this way with rhythm, specifically strumming on guitar. Uh, I've witnessed this in a lot of my students. Now, today we're really just gonna talk about the four different levels of kind of upping your rhythm guitar game. And it all starts with some kind of counting. Now there's basically two types of people in this world. There's people who are gonna practice to a metronome and people who just aren't gonna practice to a metronome, okay? So doing that, specifically practicing the backing tracks and stuff is probably the best way to do it, but I get it. Not a lot of you out there are gonna do it. I've had students who just kind of refuse, like I'm not getting better, well they don't do that. But that's fine, we don't need to do that. But there has to be some kind of internal counting, whether you're consciously counting about counting it out or not, it has to happen. So this is gonna be just kind of like four different things that we can do in increasing value that's gonna help it out, okay? So no matter how bad you think you are at rhythm, you can do this, right? These are just down strokes. If we're gonna count it, it'd be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Generally, most people out there who are music, who are interested in music can do that. Now, I think the, the problem is when it comes to maybe doing like more intricate things, they'll kind of get caught up between their upstrokes and their downstrokes, and they'll start rushing and stuff like that. I've witnessed this in tons and tons of students, and I found that this is the best, most helpful way to do it, okay? So, level one, instead of just going down, 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 we're gonna keep the downstrokes going, but we're gonna kind of add a dynamic where the first downstroke is gonna be just the root note. By the way, all this is just gonna be on an E minor chord. So middle finger, second fret on the A string, ring finger, second fret on the D string. Heck, you can even use your ring and your pinky, whatever. I'm not gonna judge you how you play an E minor chord, but we're just gonna keep it here because everybody can do that. If you're having trouble with your rhythm and you also can't play an E minor chord, like, come on, let's get, let's get going here. But basically, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the root note, so just the open E string on the first downstroke next one we're gonna get the chord so it's gonna sound like one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four I would still say that most people don't have an issue with that now not everybody it's, sometimes it's harder just to kind of concentrate but what we're doing here the main point of all of this is to kind of create a way that you can internalize counting because not everybody is really great at just being like one two three keeping that in their head all the time. So with these two beats, the one and the three on a four count, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We're gonna look at these as rhythmic handles that you can always grab onto and everything that goes on in between that is just gonna be kind of a varying degree of difficulty into intermediate land, right? So think of these as handles that you can always kind of hear whether you're not even counting it. Again, the, the count is gonna be either on the one and the three, okay? Now the next step up from that is we're gonna add something in between and it's gonna be on the two count. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we're still hearing the, there's our handle, right? But in between, we're gonna strike the A string if you can, okay? Again, if you miss the A string, if you hit the D string, it doesn't really matter. We're just kind of putting something that isn't a full string on the two count. All right, level two. That's why it's level two. It's on a two count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But the pulse is still just back and forth. Okay? So, like I said, those handles. Grab onto them. There it is. Ah. Uh, anything you want to do in between. Now, some of the tendencies there, if you haven't done stuff like that before, is you'll leave that four count. Huh? early and it'll be like one two three four one two three four one two three four. right that's where it starts getting kind of confusing for some people that's why you really have to play those pauses after as people say so often one two three four even if you have to just strike air just to kind of get that rhythmic thing going with your hand one two three four one two three four just to kind of get that that pulse into the rhythm of your body right now the next thing we're gonna do is gonna be one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and. Okay, so now we're filling some of that space. We still have that back and forth, that pulse, but now in between the one and the three, the two, we're gonna strike the A string ish. Three, four, and. 
And now, again, that 400 is going to be a down and an up. One of the fundamental principles of rhythm is to have the down beats be a down stroke a lot of the time, and the and beats, the off beats, one and up, right? One, two, three, four, and. Okay, so this is the first time we're introducing the and of four, as we're gonna call it, into the strumming pattern, all right? Now, you'll, you might notice that I'm not getting a, a big, full-bodied strum on this D'Angelico Lexington XL, which I'm rocking today. But I'm kind of aiming for the higher parts of the strings, right? So like the G, B, and E strings, we'll call it. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and. And because I'm doing that, I'm still maintaining the one and the three kind of being the pulse of the song. If it was like one, two, three, four, and one, two, that's still on time, but it has a different type of feel, right? So we're, we're really embodying the one and the three. One of the reasons we do this is because a lot of songs, if you'll notice, uh, that drums are present in, the one and the three are where like the kick and the snare are gonna be like kick, two, three, four, kick, two, snare, four. So it is kind of, you know, emulating a lot of rhythmic principles just across instruments, okay? So level three was one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. Again, speed doesn't matter, but whatever it is, you want to keep it steady, okay? Which is funny that I'm talking about keeping it steady as I'm like slowing it down and speeding it up as I'm talking faster and faster as this video goes along. But we've made it to level four. The level four of increasing your rhythm mastery. We're gonna start adding more dynamics to the front of the bar, okay? It's gonna sound like this. So now what I'm doing is I'm keeping a very steady strumming hand. Really, every count gets a downstroke and an upstroke. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And. So even if you're not mentally counting that out, there's still kind of an internalization going on with the rhythm there, okay? Because again, what, I, what I've noticed from a lot of students who have trouble doing this, it's, it's not so much the counting, it's being able to feel it. So uh, what, what I've experienced is that students like that, because like, let's be honest, like a lot of people are like, oh, it doesn't take any talent to play an instrument. I do think there is some level of innate rhythmic ability that I see across students. Some, some people are super thoughtful and they just have a harder time with rhythm. And I think it just comes down to practicing it in a different way. Some some people are just awesome at rhythm. They're just born, just, just grooving, right? They don't have a problem at all with it. But this is kind of something that I want to spend a little bit of time on because a lot of people aren't like that and they need a little bit of extra help, but uh, practicing with the metronome isn't necessarily their style, right? So it's more about just kind of hearing it. Even without a chord being played, you can still hear the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three. Okay, so every beat is going to have a change of direction, one, and two, and three, and four, and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. But where we do that across the strings is gonna be important, right? So one and two and, right here. I've still got the one on that open E string. One and two and. And then now all of those changes of direction are gonna happen in the lower band of strings, okay? One and two and. Just like that, right? It's just a down, up, down, up. Try to really announce the chord. Try to really grab that root note. One and two and. Right? We still want that E to stand out, but we want to get an up and a down and another up after that. Down, up, down, up. One and two and. And then that three, we're going to put some more gusto behind that. One and two and three. Just like that, right? And the beautiful thing about this is once you have this count down, you can really start adding and subtracting any of these uh, down beats or off beats that you want to make up your own strumming patterns. But this is a great way to really kind of hear what you're doing and then it'll be so much easier to diagnose the strumming pattern of a song and then apply it, okay? So, super important. One and two and three and four and, okay? So now once we get to the three, now we're kind of focusing more on the higher band of strings. 
So it's just a down up, down up. In fact, in a lot of ways, this is easier. It's just kind of like how you're picking hand or how your fingers. Or a pick. Or just your thumb. Okay, it's a combination of a lot of different things, but it's really just down up, down up on that three and four and. Three and four and. Okay? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Just have a nice relaxed strumming hand and wrist, right? If you if you miss the the spot, like like sometimes you just whiff on the string set, right? We've all been there before, haven't we? Just keep going. I think the one of the most important things I can relay is that don't stop. If if you miss something, don't stop and try to like grab onto the beat again. Just keep it going. The better you get it, just kind of like just grooving on something, even if you miss it. The more internalized that rhythm gets, and the more all of your playing is going to become. Because this isn't just helpful for only just strumming chords. This is going to be helpful for your lead playing too. So just keep it going. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And so again, recap. We got uh, level one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Level two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Level three. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one, two, three. Level four. And again. It's not like one of those ways is necessarily better than the other, as long as they're played in time. They're just kind of varying degrees of adding and subtracting different things, which, if you're playing a song, if you're writing a song, a lot of those things can kind of come in in an arrangement style, compositionally, where maybe like the first part, you just want to have like level one kind of going on. And then if you want to build more excitement in like a chorus or something, then you... And again, they work over any type of chord, right? So I'll just go E minor to G. Then level two on C. Back to G. Back to L1. So, a lot of this stuff is going to be applied across disciplines within music, whether it's guitar, drums, piano, playing lead stuff on time, playing rhythmically. But I definitely think it's an important lesson for everybody to just kind of think about. Think about internalizing that rhythm. Again, Please, play to a metronome or a backing track. I'm not saying don't do that, but let, let's be real. A lot of you just aren't going to do that no matter how much you may think that you want to. It's just hard for some people to turn on that metronome, right? So anyways, hopefully you learned something. Let me know if you have any comments or questions in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.